welcome to episode four. Uh, a couple of things have changed. Uh, I actually have a friend of mine playing now. You're going to see him here in just a second. His name is King Kodiak, and he uh, is going to help me out because there is a lot to do. And look at that, he's already helping me out. Creeper right in the way. Anyway, the main goal right now. No, you, you can't jump the fence, dude. You can't jump the fence. <laughs> um, the main goal right now is to get that industrial blast furnace. That is what this episode is going to be focused on. Showing off my little feed station. Uh, it's something we've tried making in the past. We never did make it until now. And uh, yeah, it's it's been becoming very useful. <laughs> And yeah, he uh, he's most likely going to be focused on thongcraft to help with transmutation. There is a way where you can, in a way, have uh, infinite iron and gold with the minimum stone. The problem is, is the minimum stone does break, so the trick is to get as much as I can out of, out of it to help me out and get that industrial blast furnace a little bit sooner. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward and get to some other things here. Okay everyone, now we are going to do a little bit of testing. Uh, he was introducing me to something that I should have actually thought of it would kind of make sense. You can use a furnace on this thing um, and it automatically will be powered by the furnace heater. The thing that we're testing here is seeing if you can do it diagonally. It doesn't seem to be working. Tried it on top and nothing doesn't seem to be getting power no matter where we put this thing. We just decided to put it right here and still wasn't getting power. So it looks like the iron furnace unfortunately cannot use the furnace heater. It's really unfortunate because it would actually be better on power. So I guess it kind of makes sense. It's from IC2 and that is from factorization. So. This is coming up with uh, another idea here, though. It might be possible to use generators as an infinite source of power with charcoal. Wondering about that. Need to figure out how the solar turbine works. Might need a lot more reflective mirrors now. Running out of trees here. There's nothing around anymore. It's all gone. Okay, so we're trying furnaces diagonally and nothing. So it looks like I tried hooking up to lead wire and that didn't work either. So yeah, it does have to be touching the furnace heater. You could probably use the bottom too. But overall, just using one with this mini, if you spread out everything, it's going to drain that battery really, really fast, especially at night. But it would be possible if you stack enough batteries to go through the night and have multiple multiples of these running. So yeah, it's already struggling just handling that kind of input just with this. 
So it can seem to do two effectively. That battery is going down really fast. The night just started and it's it's gone. So if two were being used constantly, we would need a quite a few batteries to go through the night. But this is infinite energy through solar in a very unique way with the charcoal we can get from the trees we can automatically input that into generators but we would also need a way to automatically get trees now there, that is possible with the electric engine the circuits that it can take in one of them will just reduce the amount of power that it takes by one which is probably the only one we would even need to use and it would just forever take only one EU per tick. We would need two of them though I think one for the logger and one for the actual planting of the trees. The logger is a very expensive recipe though that is something I'm gonna have to focus on getting now while still working on the industrial blast furnace. Those uh, silicone plates are very important. They are a great way to make advanced circuits as well as getting the main things needed for solar panels. So generators are not even needed anymore. So the main goal now is to actually go through and reroute this and remake it. also need to make a recycler right there. The the recycler is very important. I need to get started on making scrap as much as possible. Without the scrap, I'm not ever going to be able to even use the matter fabricator. So I'm trying to get as many 64 stacks of scrap boxes as I possibly can before getting to that point while working on making it at the same time. So that way whenever I get to it, I can start making the advanced solar panels right away as soon as it starts going. And the goal is to use generators in this automatic new way that we have found to get it going at first. It should be pretty efficient because the number one problem with using the logger and forestry in gener general with the electrical furnaces is, or the electrical engines is they did require EU so the amount you'd be getting back would be I think more than what it would take to do it so you would be losing energy. So with this way the charcoal is free forever we never have to worry about using EU to burn the charcoal and make it and yeah we'll, we'll give this a shot we will definitely be giving this a shot repositioning this on top of the house to make a foundation for it I wouldn't really call it a house just yet. It's more of a factory right now. Probably will make a house eventually, but not yet. Right now, the factory is the most important thing. I'm going to get back to working on the industrial blast furnace and we're going to go from there. Interesting note here, I have been trying to figure out an issue with these batteries. One of them wasn't charging and, and for some reason it never ever started. And I tried figuring out different ways to get some, some of a charge in it kind of thought of it as like a car battery, thought it would be working the same where it would somehow need to be charged a different way at first to kick start it again.
because it didn't seem to ever charge. And tried repositioning him different ways to try to get it to charge in some way. I, I couldn't find the way. Um, then I found out that it's actually because I just don't have enough reflective mirrors. That it's just I just need to start producing more power. The uh, another note is the levers do not work with the furnace heater or the batteries or any of that stuff I can't seem to be able to control the furnace heater which is a little unfortunate because I can't tell it to not use power at night which would be great in 1.5.1 from what I've been reading with the light sensors that would be just absolutely amazing if you could actually control that no way to automate that unfortunately. Decided to start planting some trees outside of my place because I've needed them so badly. Oh, made a little bit of a mistake there. I actually figured out how to position them from the forestry mod actually. It, all they have to do is be one diagonal and they will grow. Even though they're this close they will keep growing. So it's it's not an issue. The only thing you still gotta worry about is making sure it has contact with the sun. And I did make a little bit of a mistake here because these ones are fine, but then I started putting some next to my wall, which since I made that arch up in the top, these three rows right here will not even grow ever. It took me a while before I realized that. Yeah, I even put one in front of my door because I needed charcoal so bad and the trees were getting really far away so decided screw it need it so let's do it I decided to make a chainsaw they actually do harvest really really fast they're about as good as a diamond axe wasted up my stone axes to get rid of them forever and started using it there is one downside to the chainsaw. If you, it, it harvests really fast, so sometimes you'll hit the leaf that's above the last wood, and it has silk touch, which in this case is actually a bad thing because you get the leaf and you hardly ever need the leaves. Uh, I mean, it would be kind of cool I could do things with them, but whenever you're just trying to get wood and you need the seeds, it's it's a downside actually. Uh, I'm gonna eventually get to the advanced chainsaw and see if that changes. I don't know what I'll, what all will happen whenever I get that. But yeah, the default chainsaw does have its disadvantages. It, it's still worth it though, just because it takes around 50 EU per a piece of wood. So you're still getting tremendously good output out of it. It does take EU, so technically you are using some of the energy that you're getting out of it, but it's not enough for it to matter. You do get way more out of it than what you put in with the chainsaw, so definitely recommend it. Okay, so we figured out some things with thong crap. Tried to figure out the best way to do this transmutation, and basically where he's limited right now is his wand but what we have found out you might be able to see on the sign not sure if it's clear or not for you guys but what we found out is a couple things you need for for a 64 stack of, of smooth sandstone which in order to get that you need four stacks of, of sand so you need 256 sand for one full stack of smooth sandstone so it's kind of expensive you need so much sand for this and for 16 iron ingots you'll get 14.2222 so on gold ingots so basically you get around two nuggets and 14 gold ingots from doing this every time Uh, I also tried to 
see if I could do it without knowing the recipe and I said I had no way to discover it and it's probably because I didn't have the Thalmanomicon and that's probably the only reason so I believe you can actually discover things by just throwing stuff in there so if you know the recipes already you don't really need to use the research table you'll actually be losing so many resources by doing that you can throw the recipe inside of the crucible and just make it and you would know it the only things you would need to research is the theory of everything and getting the next wand so on so forth things like that but a lot of things you can actually just figure out just by throwing it inside of the crucible and making it so it is a really quick way to discover what needs to be done in Thomcraft. Sweet, okay, so I did get this finished this episode. It's getting pretty close there. Wasn't sure if I was actually gonna be able to do it. So here is the blast furnace. Uh just to explain a little bit as to how I did it, only used reinforced casings by first time for basic structure. You need 34 reinfor reinforced casings in order to do this, and two buckets of lava to get the 2200k heat. This is definitely the best way to start off because you need, eventually you're going to need to uh, replace part of it with advanced casings to be able to make tungsten. It is a very, very expensive furnace to have, but tungsten is extremely important. It's it's the best way to make advanced alloys eventually. You would also need a vacuum freezer, which I will be making eventually as well. Uh, I've got a lot done this episode. Um, right now I am going to make an MFE. This is how I do it. I put an MFE right underneath it because I explained in a previous episode this needs constant power. So it's good to have a MFE underneath it to make sure that it has that sustain 128 in at all times and keep a little bit of an opening to keep a uh, check on the MFE anytime that you use it to make sure that it does never explode and uh, that is going to be it for this episode the next episode I'm going to be focusing on getting the industrial centrifuge the uh, industrial electrolyzer uh, a couple of other things. Those are the two main things right now that I'm going to be focusing on in the next episode. And that's it. I'm starting to get a little bit better at this whole thing. I mean, I'm still kind of new to the whole video thing, but uh, I do think uh, this episode went really well, and uh, I hope I can continue to keep making them this good. I will see you guys again soon.